So Terrifying Tuesdays is no more, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop reading creepy stories. I'm just going to retitle them and put them in a different playlist. Well, it's the same playlist, I'm just rebranding it, I guess. I don't know, this is just going to be like a horror story, creepy story playlist. Because not all those stories are actually scary, they're just all creepy slash kind of scary. And, and, and I understand that. So, here we go. I'm a huge animal lover. Which is part of what makes living in a third world country so difficult. In the lower echelons, you see them kicked, shunned, and starving on the sides of dusty roads. This isn't generally an act of cruelty, but an act of willful ignorance. When you don't have enough money to feed your own family, your concern with the plight of street strays is necessarily diminished. If you're fortunate enough to have money, you see a different kind of abuse. One born not out of apathy, but greed. Overcrowded cages, heaving with endangered or exotic animals with dull eyes. Manicured men eager to haggle with you as they would a, for a car or a handbag, touting the rarity of this one's markings or that one's size. Of course, you can report them. There are laws, and even here, this kind of trade is illegal. Call the authorities, though, and the animals will be moved or euthanized and dumped within the hour. No evidence, no crime. Word spreads fast, and often from the mouths of the police themselves. Naturally, I don't support the trade. Most pet owners, animal lovers, people who actually care, don't. They rescue them off the streets, parasite-ridden, cringing with sharp ribs and hungry for love. Alternatively, if terribly concerned by disease, temperament, or breed, they find a reputable breeder, as I did. My last pet, Saska, was a Burmese. I loved her dearly, and had cried for hours when she died of kidney failure. She was 18 and had lived a wonderful life. Spoiled, doted on, forever snuck table scraps with huge hazel eyes and a high-pitched mule. I was lonely and I missed my girl. Maybe that's why when passing the livestock section of the Thursday markets, I didn't simply avert eye contact. Maybe that's why I hesitated and maybe that's why I was immediately captivated by a filthy, rusting cage home to a tightly packed mass of imports. Most of them were sick. They all had conjunctivitis, purulent red-rimmed eyes studded me without focus. They were matted and huddled together for warmth, shrinking back as I approached. Behind the mask of illness, though, it was evidence that they were all meant to be of good quality. These were pets for the wealthy, or at least those who wanted to appear that way. Most appeared to be oriental breeds. Burmese, like my beloved Saska. Siamese, Persian, although there was the ever-popular and fabulously expensive Bengal. And some western breeds. I'm a huge animal lover, but I was lonely and... I could save one. I wrapped her in a towel for the drive home. She was crawling with parasites, too weak to lift her head. I noticed blood streaks on her belly and made a mental note to book an appointment with a groomer as soon as we arrived home. She mewled at me, softly. I stroked her forehead. She mewled again, louder this time. <sighs> I don't speak Russian, honey, I answered, and she curled up in her chair and cried.